Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our Considering a Heat Pump webinar. My name is Sam, and we are also joined by my colleague, Elena, and we are here representing the Clean BC Community Energy Coach Program. Our program supports communities, local governments, and industry stakeholders in the promotion of the Clean BC rebate programs, as well as the education of heat pumps, uh, which is probably why most of you are here today. Uh, so as you may have noticed, this webinar is being recorded and today is July 12th, 2022. We will be sharing uh, a number of different resources, including quite a bit of rebate information. And all of the rebates are uh, what is available today, July 12th. So if you are watching at a later date, please visit betterhomesbc.ca for more up-to-date information. I will be monitoring the chat throughout uh, as my colleague presents. So if you do have questions, please use the chat. I'll answer along the way. And uh, we will do a more kind of informal Q&A towards the end as well, where I'll invite you to take yourselves off mute for any questions. All of the, um, the questions that do come through, I'll package everything up for everyone and send out in a follow-up document as well, alongside the slides and the recording. So stay tuned for that. We'd also like to just take a brief moment to acknowledge with respect the Coast and Strait Salish and Wissanic peoples on whose traditional unceded territory we are presenting today, as well as the Lekwungen, Songhees, Esquimalt and Wissanic whose historical relationship with the land continue to this day. Uh, and I also invite everyone to take a brief moment to acknowledge where they're joining us today. And um, just also a final thanks to the Fraser Valley uh, Regional Library to uh, help us promote and organize this event this evening. And with that, I'll pass things over to Ellie. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, and good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining tonight. I'm really excited that a lot of you showed up um, uh, to learn more about heat pumps tonight. And um, we have a really big program <laughs> within one hour. So we're gonna cover quite a bit of ground. So my name is uh, Elena or Ellie, and um, I will teach you a little bit more about heat pumps and why they're so great tonight. We're gonna get started with uh, me explaining why you hear the term heat pump absolutely everywhere. I'll obviously explain what a heat pump is, how it works, what kind of heat pumps are most commonly installed in BC, and we'll, uh, we'll debunk some myths together. I'll share tips of things you should know before buying a heat pump, where to find contractors, and obviously we will dive into the rebates. Um, so if you have any questions in the meantime, write them in the chat. You don't have to monitor the chat the whole time. Um, you will get all the Q&A from the chat sent to you by email. Um, yeah, and can ask questions later on as well. Okay, let's get started. So yeah, why heat pumps? Why do we hear heat pump about heat pumps everywhere? Why do we see the ads everywhere? And the, you know, one of the main answers and the most high level answers is our climate crisis. Um, we are in a climate crisis. Um, climate change becomes more and more threatening and different governments and municipalities react to this climate change impact. Um, in BC, we got our Clean BC strategy. So this is a strategy paper, how to uh, move to a net zero economy, a net zero province by 2050. And we also have the roadmap to 2030s which outlines how we want to drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 to then contribute to a larger 2050 goal. There's a ton of different strategies in this document, uh, one of which addresses buildings, which is why we're here today, um, and especially decarbonizing buildings. And when we talk about that, we always talk about low carbon technologies. So technologies that don't have a lot of greenhouse gas emissions or no greenhouse gas emissions. And the best way to do that in our buildings here in BC is by installing heat pumps. And that is important because buildings here in British Columbia represent about 11% of the whole province's total emissions, which is quite a big chunk. 
And over half of our buildings and homes here in BC are still heated by fossil fuels. Um, so there is huge potential uh, by shifting towards heat pumps. We often call this electrification of homes. So BC Hydro, our electric uh, provider here, um, electricity provider here is fully on board with that. And part of that is you know, to electrify homes to shift towards electric heating and water heating systems. And among the electric heating and water heating systems, heat pumps are by far the most efficient one. Um, so they use the least amount of electricity, which you will learn in a second. So that's a huge reason why we're moving towards heat pumps. Policy is moving that way. Um, politics are moving that way. And on top of that, there's also just a lot of benefits that come with heat pumps. First and foremost, heat pumps simply are the most energy efficient heating and cooling system someone can possibly have in their homes. And heat pumps are a two-in-one system. So it's really convenient. By installing a heat pump, you not only have a new heating system that's super efficient, it also functions as air conditioning in the summer. And here in BC, where our electricity comes from hydropower, we're very, very fortunate um, that heat pumps or any other electric heating system is actually very climate friendly. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but heat pumps also provide very effective air filtration. So it helps your home, um, helps to get your home a little bit healthier. And lastly, you also don't pay any carbon tax on an electric heating system, such as a heat pump. Um, and a lot of you probably know is that the carbon tax in BC is steadily increasing all the way to 2030, which makes um, fossil fuels like natural gas a lot less attractive to heat with uh, in the future. So let's take a look at those different benefits a little bit more, uh, starting with the efficiency. I said it's the most energy efficient heating system that you can have worldwide. And it is about three to, three to four times as energy efficient as the most efficient gas furnace or as electric baseboards, which have an efficiency of 100%. How is that possible? That is possible because heat pumps work a lot different than any other heating system before. So where mm, gas or oil furnaces burn a fuel to create heat from scratch, so to speak, to turn that fuel into heat energy, or electric baseboards or electric furnaces use electric resistance to turn 100% of that electricity into heat energy, what a heat pump can do is it absorbs heat energy that's already available in the ambient air that doesn't have to be produced, it's already there. It absorbs it, pumps it up to a higher temperature level by using a compressor, so that's the electricity that you pay for, and you get a much larger heat output than if you use electric baseboards, um, for example. Um, so heat pumps just utilize heat that's already available. They don't have to generate it from scratch. And that's how it can be so much more efficient than any other heating system. Because it is so efficient, among the electric heating systems, it's by far the most cost effective. I think a lot of people are a little bit concerned about electric heating systems because um, they find that for example, electric baseboards can be quite costly, but heat pumps use about three to four times less electricity than electric baseboards to get the home to the same temperature level. So you use a lot less um, electricity that you have to pay for. And a huge bonus for heat pumps, uh, maybe not so much this summer yet, but last summer we all went through the heat dome and um, I know where you are in the Fraser well, uh, Valley, it was very, very horrible as well. But um, Sam and I are here in Victoria on the island. Uh, it was so bad some days that I actually ended up camping in my own backyard because it was just unbearable uh, inside. And I know that a lot of people were, um, you know, really concerned about their elderly or children or pets because it got quite dangerous for a lot of people. So I was definitely 
very jealous of all the people I know who had a heat pump at home because they simply put it on cooling mode and enjoyed 21 degrees in their home. Um, so the great thing about those heat pumps is that it's a two-in-one system. You can switch between heating and cooling um, all in one. And I mentioned it earlier, our electricity comes from hydropower, which is a huge asset for BC because everything that is powered electrically in BC is also powered climate friendly. So, you know, it's not uh, it's not a secret that heating with oil is probably not the best idea for the climate, but even in comparison, um, natural gas still has huge uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So by switching from a fossil fuel heating system to a heat pump, you can really drastically reduce your emissions and live in a much more climate friendly home. And heat pumps do actually provide very effective air filtration and humidity control. So that comes in very handy during forest fire season. Also fingers crossed that it won't be that bad this summer. And it helps rid your home of indoor pollutants and dust, pollen, any allergens. So if you or any household members suffer from allergies, um, a heat pump can really help with that as well. So we'll get into the zonal heating in more detail when we talk about the different types of heat pumps that are out there. But there is a certain type of heat pump that um, is ductless and can provide zonal heating, which means that you can heat to different temperature levels in different areas of the home. So great idea if you have a basement or a rental suite or you just simply want to heat bedrooms to a different temperature level than the living room, for example. To summarize all this, simply put, a heat pump is just the heating system of the future. That is where policy is moving. That is where the market is moving. And that is really where the demand is moving as well. Because um, just like this couple here that's also in Vancouver Island here in the greater Victoria region, for them, it was really important that they retrofit their home to get ready for uh, have a, you know, more resilient home in terms of climate change impact. They insulated their walls and replaced their windows. They wanted solar panels and got an electric vehicle. But it was um, it was just as important to them to make sure that they replaced their fossil fuel heating system with a heat pump to not only have a more climate friendly home, but to have a healthier home, to have a more comfortable home uh, in the summer and in the winter. Well, uh, now that you know why heat pumps are so great, I definitely want to explain a little bit more how they work because it is such a genius way to operate a heating system. And the easiest way to explain that is by using an appliance that you all have at home because really your refrigerator at home is pretty much just an insulated box with a type of heat pump in it. And I'll quickly explain how that works. So you got your refrigerator that has refrigerant lines in it, which give it the name. And that refrigerant, I sometimes call it, is very sensitive. Um, that refrigerant can absorb heat even at very low temperatures. So even when your fridge is already cool, um, there's it can still absorb heat energy from within the fridge. So it absorbs that and then travels through a compressor that pumps it up to a very high temperature level. And then it pretty much dumps the heat to the outside of your fridge. So if you ever look at what's behind your fridge, which um, is something that we all try to avoid, but if you did, you would feel that there's warm air coming out. Um, and that is exactly what a heat pump does in cooling mode. So if this is your home, uh, it absorbs heat from within your home, pump, pumps it through a compressor to then dump it to the outside. You can also just reverse that cycle and now it absorbs heat from the exterior and pumps it through the compressor to a higher temperature level and um, uh, you know move it inside your home. So that's the cycle that I was just talking about. However, um, there is a really great video from BC Hydro with Dave from BC Hydro, you might know him. And I think Dave really explains how heat pumps work perfectly in here with nice little uh, animated 
videos. So I'm going to be quiet for a second and let Dave take it away. Hey, it's me, Dave, and this is a heat pump. It's an energy efficient heating and cooling system you can install at home. How does it work? Here, let me show you. Your typical air source heat pump, like this mini split system, has two main components, an indoor and an outdoor unit, which are connected by a refrigerant line. To heat your home in the winter, the outdoor unit pulls heat from the air outside your home. Yes, believe it or not, even when it's cold, outside air still contains a certain amount of heat. The warm air then goes through a refrigerant coolant that is compressed to increase the temperature even more. This warm air is then pushed through to the home. In the summer, to cool your home, the process is reversed. The heat pump absorbs the warm air in your home and transfers it outside. The compressor circulates refrigerant to the indoor evaporator coil and the refrigerant absorbs heat as it passes over the indoor air. The resulting cool and dehumidified air then gets blown back into the home. And that's how a heat pump works. The key here is that heat pumps don't generate heat, but instead they move it from one place to another, which is why heat pumps are so energy efficient. In fact, a heat pump can be up to 300% more efficient than electric baseboards. So if you already have electric heat, a heat pump can help you save on your energy bill. Less energy and more savings, I like. If you're switching from a fossil fuel-based heating source like a natural gas furnace, you'll be reducing your carbon footprint. It's kind of like going from a size 18 down to a size two. You get the idea. It's an environmentally friendly option, especially here in BC where we're powered by water. Plus, with rebates from Clean BC and BC Hydro, there's more to say. Awesome. Thank you, Dave from BC Hydro. So yeah, I think he explains so perfectly. Really, the right, real takeaway from this video is that heat pumps are so much more efficient because instead of generating heat, they move heat from one place to another and pump it up to a higher temperature level in the process. So now that you know how heat pumps work, I want to introduce uh, some types of heat pumps that are the most popular here in BC. There's all kinds of heat pump types uh, all over the world, but these are the ones that we see most commonly. First, uh, the central ducted heat pump. So central ducted really just describes it very well. It is a central type of heating system that uses duct work to distribute heat throughout the building, just like a furnace. You, it always comes with an outdoor unit, kind of looks like this. In the outdoor unit, you get the refrigerant lines and the compressor. So even on cold winter days, it absorbs heat from the ambient air, pumps it through the compressor, and then um, it is distributed through duct work throughout the house. And on a hot, humid summer day, it absorbs heat from the inside of the home and transfers it to the compressor, gets it hotter, and then transfers it to the outside of the home to then cool your home. Among those central ducted heat pumps, there's also a type that's called dual fuel ducted heat pump. So dual fuel really just means that you not only use the electric heat pump as the main heating system, you also have an integrated natural gas or propane furnace, so a burner here, that can come on at a, a certain temperature setting, let's say at minus two degrees, for example, um, to then um, provide supplemental heat at a certain temperature level. On uh, Vancouver Island or the lower mainland where you are, um, that kind of fossil fuel backup heat is not really required because we enjoy really mild winters comparatively, um, but it is definitely an option. And the second type of heat pump that you also saw in the video is also a very, very popular type. It's called a ductless mini split heat pump. And the mini split is great because it's very versatile. So it comes usually with a smaller outdoor unit that then connects refrigerant lines to most commonly indoor heads that are mounted on the top of the wall. And you can just set the temperature with um, 
a remote control. And the great thing is you can have one or multiple indoor heads. So it provides zonal heating because you can heat different rooms to different temperatures. Among those mini splits, there's even ducted or partially ducted versions. So that's what makes them so um, versatile. What we got here in this house, a very busy picture, is there is a mini split heat pump outdoor unit uh, that has three different refrigerant lines. One is connected to an indoor head that's mounted in a you know living room, dining room situation. And then there's also two more refrigerant lines that are connected to what they're called mini ducts that are often installed either in an attic or in a crawl space that can then connect to the odd bedroom or bathroom upstairs. So in real life, that can look something like this in an attic or other names for that type of heat pump um, are mini split. Honestly, mini split is probably used the most. Sometimes it's called a multi split if it has multiple heads or simply a split system or ductless heat pump. So many, many different options with those mini split heat pumps. But among both the mini splits and the central ducted heat pumps, there are versions that are called cold climate heat pumps. So those cold climate heat pumps are the Cadillac of heat pumps, really. They work super efficiently in conditions down to minus 25 degrees. So even at minus 18 degrees, they still maintain an efficiency of 200%. And mind you, electric baseboards, for example, they have an efficiency of 100%. So even at minus 18 degrees, that type of heat pump is still twice as efficient as electric baseboards, for example. Again, on the lower mainland, um, in, on Vancouver Island, we enjoy pretty mild winters and cold climate heat pumps might not be required. However, they are by far the most energy efficient heat pumps. So a lot of people actually get them installed just because they are using even less electricity than the normal heat pumps. And when people ask, well, should I go with a central system or a mini split? It really kind of depends on the individual home because every home is so unique. All the heat pumps do require a uh, provide air conditioning. Only the ductless heat pumps require, uh, sorry, don't require duct work and provide zonal heating. Both uh, have air filtration. Uh, but what you can generally say, if someone has a home that has a furnace, that has ductwork existing, that is in really good shape, you know, that's nice and airtight, uh, and people like that central type of heat, then a central ducted heat pump is probably a really good idea. But a lot of people also really like zonal heating or live in a home that only has electric baseboards, that only has a wood fireplace, or that want to um, you know, have, that have a smaller home and a, a mini split heat pump can be a great option for that. So um, there are a lot of myths floating around, or I also just really like to call them concerns because heat pumps are a little bit of a different type of heating system. So there's a few concerns um, and I, I'm definitely gonna address them now. First and foremost, one of the most common concerns when you know we get questions about heat pumps is, are heat pumps expensive to purchase? How much is my heat pump gonna cost? And I completely understand why people would wanna know that. However, it is a very tough question to answer, give a ballpark answer even, because what we got here on this table is the uh, cost range from a rebate program um, what they saw, you know, how much gas furnaces were that had been installed, how much heat pumps were that had been installed. And you see both for the gas furnaces, as well as for the heat pumps, the range of cost is very, very broad. Um, so we got some averages here, but, you know, really take them with a grain of salt because the cost of a heat pump or a gas furnace depends on so many different factors, like the size and layout of the home, 
um, the type of heat pump you install, like is it a central system or a mini split or a cold climate heat pump? Um, does it require any other upgrades? What brand is it? How efficient is it? All those things really need to be taken into consideration. So we got those averages here, but your heat pump might be a lot cheaper than that, or it might be quite a bit more expensive than that. That is really a question that a contractor can answer based on a site visit um, and part of the quote process. But what I can say is that at the moment, the rebates for heat pumps are absolutely amazing. Of course, we'll get into that. And the average cost after rebates is very, very comparable to the cost of a, a gas furnace. And um, as a reminder, you know, it could be a lot lower, it could be a lot higher, but at the moment, it's a really great time to take advantage of heat pump rebates. And the good thing about the heat pumps is that by buying a heat pump, you also get an air conditioner all in one. And if you switch from a fossil fuel, you also drastically reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. Second, consideration or you know concern that a lot of people have uh, or misconception really is that heat pumps are super noisy that might have been true for the first or very older generation of heat pumps they were quite noisy modern heat pumps have decibel ratings of around 50 to 60 where i want to say that 60 decibels is actually twice as loud as 50 decibels so um, even if you can, decibels can make quite a difference. But in comparison, heat pumps are actually not that noisy, especially the newer models. Um, they do make some noise, but um, they have become a lot quieter than the older heat pumps. Also, all those heat pumps come with decibel ratings. So if that is really a concern for you, ask your contractors as part of the quote process. Um, what the decibel ratings are of the heat pumps they carry. And um, in fact, the city of Vancouver has a really great heat pump and noise guide. They really debunk all the myths around heat pumps and noise and how, how loud they are. And they share a lot of great tips of things that can be done um, to even further reduce the, the noise levels of heat pumps. So definitely check that out. It will also be part of the resources that you're going to get by email. Um, because heat pumps are quite a different heating system, some people think that they need a lot of maintenance or more maintenance than other heating systems, which um, isn't true, you know, maybe except for electric baseboards that pretty much need zero maintenance. But uh, really for heat pumps, it's just important to schedule a maintenance appointment every one or two years just to make sure everything is running smoothly, everything's fine with the refrigerant. And also by far, one of the most important uh, and common questions that we get is, well, how much is it gonna cost to operate my heat pump? What will my hydro bills be like? Another question that I fully understand that people wanna have answered before buying a heat pump. However, it's also one of those it really, truly, highly depends answers. And it's very hard to give a ballpark answer because the operating cost depends on even more factors than the installation cost. So again, it will depend on the size and layout of your home, the size of your heat pump. Is it a cold climate heat pump or a normal heat pump? How efficient is it? Um, what, you know, what brand is it? Uh, how do you use the heat pump? What are the temperature settings? And also what's, uh, what's going on in your home? Is it well insulated? Is it um, very leaky? There's just so many considerations. However, what I can tell you is a few facts that should be true for any new heat pump. And that is that you can expect changes to your hydro bill. If you're switching away from a fossil fuel to a heat pump, then of course your electrical consumption will go up. Uh, but if it will be offset by a decrease in your fossil fuel consumption, and again with the um, carbon tax, heating and 
yeah, and um, water heating with a fossil fuel will be a lot more expensive in the future. And if you are switching from an electric baseboards to a heat pump, now you're going to be using a lot less electricity. So likely you will see a decrease in your hydro bills. Then uh, what's also true is that if you purchase a high efficiency heat pump, you can really affect the operating costs. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slides. But if, if that is a concern, if your home is also nice and airtight, then um, why not get a cold climate heat pump, which is by far the most efficient. It will depend on the quality of installation. Uh, it's important that your heat pump is sized properly for your home. So that means that it has the right capacity for your home isn't too big or too small uh, in terms of capacity. And it will really highly depend on the state of your home in terms of you know, energy efficiency. So before doing anything <laughs> um, in terms of heating upgrades, you should always address the building envelope first. So that's insulation, windows, and air sealing, because a heat pump will work a lot better in a home that is nice and airtight. If you install a really great heat pump in a super leaky, under-insulated home, you'll lose a lot of heat to the outside, and that is heat and electricity that you pay for. So to summarize that, you get maximum efficiency and uh, maximum cost effectiveness if you buy a high-efficiency heat pump that has been well installed by a qualified installer um, and that has been installed in an energy efficient home. So a few maintenance considerations that will also affect the heat pump performance, so to speak, is, well, regularly, it's wise to check the manufacturer's manual at least once when you get it, even though none of us like to read manuals. Um, and, you know, replace the indoor filters of dust and pollen, especially after a forest fire season. You want to make sure that in the uh, spring and in the fall, you clear the outdoor unit of any debris, leaves, snow, dirt. And annually, as mentioned earlier, schedule that servicing appointment with your installer just to make sure everything's running smoothly. One thing that I really wanna explain a little bit more is another operating tip that will ensure that your heat pump operates the most efficient. So it uses um, not as much electricity. And that is the set it and forget it principle. So heat pumps, unlike gas furnaces that burn a fuel and blast hot air into your home, heat pumps have to absorb heat from one place and transfer it to the other and then, you know, um, transfer it through the compressor, get up to a higher temperature level. So that takes a little while, but once it is on its temperature level, it runs incredibly smoothly and very efficiently. So in fact, your heat pump actually runs the most efficiently if you just set it to your preferred temperature level and you leave it at that. That doesn't mean that you can turn it up and down by a couple degrees. It just means that it actually runs more efficiently if you leave it at that temperature level than let's say turning it off completely when you leave the house because it will use a lot more electricity to you know, start back up from scratch. And um, heat pumps, uh, there is another really common myth uh, that we hear floating around a lot is heat pumps don't work in cold weather, which is simply not true because even in very cold temperatures, um, the air still contains a lot of heat energy. And there are those cold, cold climate heat pumps uh, for the super cold regions. They operate well all the way down to minus 25 degrees. And there's examples of those types of heat pumps all over North America, like this one in Colorado or in New England, they install a lot of heat pumps. Or even here in Canada, all the way on the other side of, of the country, in Nova Scotia, they install heat pumps uh, a lot as well. And those winters are quite a bit colder than what we're used to here. So now that you know quite a bit about 
about heat pumps and how they work, um, here are a few tips that we want to share with you before you go out and buy one. First and foremost, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to really put in the time and do the homework to, to get a few different quotes from different installers and go with a qualified installer and avoid buying wholesale or online. Going with an installer that ideally specializes in heat pumps, um, asking a ton of questions like, you know, what types of heat pumps do you carry? Uh, do you do heat load calculations? Do you, are you very knowledgeable about the rebates out there and so on? We do acknowledge that at the moment, it's quite hard to, you know, get quotes very easily because heat pump contractors are very, very busy, but it is definitely worth the effort of comparing prices and availability and, you know, the types of heat pumps they carry. Also, what I mentioned earlier, before even thinking about any new heating system, doesn't matter if it's a heat pump or a gas furnace or whatever it is, it's very important to address air leakage in the home. So to draft proof and insulate, uh, just to make sure that you don't lose all that heat through the walls and attic and all those little cracks. And then make sure that the heat pump is sized properly for the home. Uh, designed for your climate and that it, it includes supplementary heating if that is necessary for your home. A great way to start is by getting an Energat home evaluation. So that's an unbiased energy assessment of your home um, by an unbiased energy advisor. So you know what kind of upgrades you should prioritize in which order and an Energat evaluations are required for some of the rebate programs. So speaking of contractors, um, where can you find contractors in BC? I will properly introduce this website in a second, but um, you can find contractors on betterhomesbc.ca under the menu button or directly uh, under forward slash find a contractor. So they got a really great contractor search tool where you select heat pump and then you just type in where you're located in BC. And you get a randomized list of contractors that you can work with um, for the clean BC rebates to get heat pump rebates. So um, starting July 1st, he, and now people have to work with registered contractors from this list to get the clean BC heat pump rebates. So definitely make sure you check out that list. And with that, we have actually successfully made it to the rebate section. I'm quickly going to take a sip of water because we're um, in for quite a lot of information. Before I get started, just a couple notes. Um, first of all, the good news is there's a ton of rebates out there at the moment. Um, and that always comes with a flip side, uh, which is that a ton of rebates also come with a ton of program requirements and deadlines. So it can be quite complex to navigate um, and we don't have a lot of time. I could probably talk about the rebates until midnight, but I doubt you would wanna stick around. So we've crammed that information in the, the last few minutes of the webinar, but if you find yourself a little bit overwhelmed by the information, don't worry. You will get access to all these resources and real people that you can talk to about your specific situation and your rebates that you can access. And also um, the other note is that the rebates I'm talking about tonight are available as of today, July 12th. So if you are watching this at a later point or checking back in, definitely check out the resources that I'm sharing with you. But to start, super high level, there's two major rebate programs that you should be aware of. Uh, once, uh, one of them is our provincial clean BC rebates. Um, so that those are available province wide. And on the other hand, we have the federal nationwide Canada Greener Homes Grant. Um, the good news is you can get both programs and we're gonna get started with um, the provincial ones, but first, 
just to um, you know overwhelm you a little bit, <laughs> there is a lot of information in this table, but it's really just an overview of how much you could currently get through both programs for different types of heat pumps. So on the left hand side, you see different types of heat pumps you can get. And then here you see the rebates amounts you could get if you're switching from electricity like baseboards or an electric furnace to a heat pump. So that's currently up to $7,000. And on this side, you see how much you could get if you switch from a fossil fuel like oil, gas, or propane to a heat pump, which is quite a bit more. It's um, currently up to $11,000. So before I talk about the provincial rebates uh, or you know, detail, more details about that, I want to introduce you to this website, which is your one-stop shop and information hub to find all this information about all the different rebates. The website is called betterhomesbc.ca and it is a government funded program so it is designed to be one information hub for all British Columbians to learn about all the different rebates that are available to them to learn about energy efficiency upgrades like insulation, windows, heat pumps uh, in an unbiased way. And on this website, you can also find the contractor search tool and energy advisor search tool. And in my opinion, the best part of the program is that it comes with real people you can talk to um, who are super well trained. They really know their stuff about heat pumps and rebates and where to get started. And you can call them toll free from Monday to Friday, nine to five. And you can also shoot them an email. So that's uh, really, really handy to have if you want to talk about your situation with, uh, with a real person. On the website, there's a rebate search tool. So you can get started with that. You can just type in where you're located in BC, uh, let it know how your home is currently heated. And then you get a list of all kinds of rebates that you could possibly access. That could also be windows or insulation. Uh, but let's say you're really into those mini split heat pumps, you can click on that and it takes you to the summary page for the mini split heat pump rebate. And that summary page has absolutely everything you need to know about the rebate. So uh, heat pump requirements, costs, uh, sorry, not costs, um, the deadlines, the qualifying product lists, and so on. Um, and if you get confused by information or you know you have any follow-up questions you can simply call an energy coach and you know talk about your situation so now in the next few slides i'm gonna first start with the provincial clean bc rebates and then jump over to the federal canada greener homes grant but with the clean bc rebates really what you need to know is that it's only available for single family and side-by-side -side row homes or duplexes or mobile homes on permanent foundation. Um, that just means it's not available for larger apartment buildings or condo buildings. And the heat pump that you install has to become your primary heating system. So you can't just install air conditioning um, and the heat pump has to be found on a qualifying product list. So it has to meet certain efficiency requirements. And on the next few slides, uh, I will show the different rebate amounts through Clean BC for different scenarios, because it depends on what kind of heating system you currently have. Starting with the scenario where you have uh, electricity as your primary heating system. So for instance, an electric furnace or electric baseboards and you switch to a heat pump. Currently, the rebates range between one and $2,000. And because this rebate comes from BC Hydro, um, you first have to check your eligibility with BC Hydro by uh, using this tool. It's very simple. You just need your BC Hydro account number and your home square footage. And it tells you right away if they consider you electrically heated and if you use enough electricity to qualify for this rebate. 
And then we have the fossil fuel heated homes. So if you heat with oil, gas, or propane, the rebates are quite a bit higher through Clean BC. So there is $6,000 for mini splits and central systems. And then we got those heat pumps um, that are a little bit, we didn't talk about them that much, but the dual fuel ones, for example, the ones that use, um, uh, that use fossil fuel backup, the rebate is a little lower, $3,000. And then there's also those air to water heat pumps. They work exactly like the heat pumps I, I showed you. They just heat water instead of air for, you know, for example, in floor heating. Also $3,000. And a, some homes that switch from a fossil fuel to an electric heating system have to upgrade their electric panel. So they have to upgrade to uh, 200 or 400 amp service. That can be quite costly. So there is also a $500 rebate. So that was the rebates. And rebate really just means that you pay up front and then you get reimbursed after. But CleanBC also has an alternative to the rebates, which is their low interest financing program. So you can choose if you heat with a fossil fuel um, to, instead of getting a rebate, getting financing at 0% over five years. Um, the loan is between $1,000 and $40,000. I um, hope the heat pump wouldn't cost $40,000, uh, but that's the maximum. And you can um, get that installed by a finance registered contractor. You can find the, them under this contractor search tool that I showed you. Um, because they are registered with the program to set you up with this loan. CleanBC also adds this really nice group purchase rebate. The group purchase rebate really just rewards groups of homeowners who work together to switch from a fossil fuel to a heat pump. And the way it works is you can either start a new group or register and join an existing group. Um, and then if um, homeowners all install a heat pump around the same time, um, they can all get an extra rebate on top of their normal rebate, depending on the size of the group. So that's a really great rebate. You can ask energy coaches about that, or of course, read about it on the Better Homes website. And um, it's it's a pretty young program. Clean BC also came out with this income qualified version of their rebates. So this is for income brackets um, based on the number of people who live in a home and they offer enhanced rebates that cover either 60 or 95% of upgrade cost. So that is really awesome for income qualified homes. Um, for heat pumps specifically, that means people can get up to $9,500. That's, uh, that's a lot. And the great thing about it is um, you work with a contractor who is registered with this program. You can also find those contractors on the list. And you do that because they can deduct the rebate amount directly from your invoice. So you don't even have to pay for that portion upfront. So you don't get reimbursed. It just gets deducted from the invoice. Um, so that's a really, really great program as well. So those were all of our provincial clean BC programs. Um, and finally, we will also quickly talk about the Federal Canada Greener Homes Grant. So this program launched uh, last year. It is available nationwide and they offer up to $5,000 towards energy efficiency upgrades. That could be windows or insulation or heat pump. They also offer $600 towards Energuide home evaluations because for this program, you have to register beforehand and you have to get a pre-retrofit evaluation before you get started. And then once your renovations are done, you have to also get a post-retrofit evaluation uh, by your energy advisor to apply. For the heat pump grants, they range between $2,500 and $5,000, depending on the type of heat pump you get. And for this program, it's important to note that 
if you're the homeowner of a home, you actually have to also live there. It is not available for uh, rental homes. Great news is you can stack them with clean BC rebates. Um, but for this program, you have to pre-register and get those Energet home evaluations. And just recently, Canada Greener Homes also stepped it up and um, launched their loan program. Uh, for Clean BC, you can either do the rebate or lo the loan. The great thing about Canada Greener Homes loan is that you can do the loan and you can get the Canada Greener Homes grant as well. So even more money. It launched uh, recently. You can get loans of up to $40,000, uh, also at 0% financing. And exactly like the Canada Greener Homes grant, you have to register and get an Energuide home evaluation before you do anything else. Um, you pay that loan back over 10 years. So how do you even start? How do you maximize all the programs? Uh, we recommend starting with an Energuide home evaluation because it is a, a, a requirement for Canada Greener Homes. You can find those energy advisors on the Better Homes BC website as well. There's a search tool just like for contractors. There is one for energy advisors. And then once you've secured yourself one, register for Canada Greener Homes. And once you have your reports from the energy advisor, we recommend just calling or emailing an energy coach and talking about your situation, making sure you got all your ducks in a row for your specific situation and then uh, go from there. The reason is, you know, with so many programs, there's a lot of requirements to navigate. Um, there's a lot of different deadlines. For instance, Clean BC has a six month deadline to apply. Canada Greener Homes doesn't have a deadline at all, but they require you to get an evaluation and so on. So a lot of things to navigate. But the good news is there is help <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I said it many times, but there is those Clean BC energy coaches and they are awesome. They provide free coaching support. You can call them toll free, you can email them and find all that info on betterhomesbc.ca. And Canada Greener Homes actually also has their own um, uh, phone, phone service and they also have the world's uh, longest email address <laughs> that you can also email. But with that, we actually made it through and I really hope that you know a lot more about heat pumps than you did an hour ago. I uh, hope you enjoyed that information. Thank you very much for sharing your evening with us. And I will pass it on to my colleague Sam for any questions. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is pause our recording.